Hi everyone, this is the first lecture in a, a series of lectures designed as a fluid mechanics primer to get you all up to speed on uh, the equations that we use to solve fluid problems. And these equations can generally be expressed as conservation equations, but they're most naturally written down as integrals over a volume, and therefore the challenge in deriving equations that are actually useful for us is really to convert these integral equations uh, down to point form equations. So that's really what we're doing in, uh, in writing these equations down. So today's lecture is on the conservation of mass uh, equation. I'm going to assume that you've read the accompanying notes which outline things like uh, Leibniz theorem and, and Gauss's theorem as well as outlining the continuum hypothesis uh, and the total time derivative. And that allows me to start from a situation uh, which is actually the definition of mass in a fluid, which is simply the integral over a certain volume V of the density rho. Okay. So across to the right here I've drawn our volume V. We think of this as a control volume, and the control volume might vary uh, as a function of time. Uh, it has a volume V, it has a a surface area S and it also has a unit normal uh, which is a vector n um, defined at every point on the surface. So conservation of mass is simply saying that on this control volume uh, if there are no fluxes of mass in or out of this control volume then the uh, rate of change of mass is simply equal to zero. In other words the rate of change of our integral over volume of rho is also zero. So to actually use this equation what we need to do is we need to bring this um, time derivative inside the derivative and to do that we use Leibniz theorem in 3D and that allows us to write to rho dt integrated over the volume plus Term for which takes into account the velocity dotted with a unit normal of the surface. Okay, so have a look in your notes if you want to try and understand where this came from. I won't go into the details, but that allows us uh, to then um, manipulate these terms a little bit more easily. This right hand term can be turned back into a volume integral if we use Gauss's theorem or the divergence theorem because this is just the integral over the volume of the divergence of dot there, of rho u uh, dv. Okay. Now, I'm just going to write out this one here. And so now you'll notice that our equation is made up of two volume integrals over the same volume. In other words, we can add them together, as we do here, and put them under the one single volume integral. So integral over V of d rho dt plus the divergence of rho u to the zero. Okay. Now, a key, a key assumption about our volume is we never, de never um, defined how big it would be. And what that means, in concert with the continuum hypothesis, is that we can make it arbitrarily small, infinitesimally small. In other words, this volume integral can simply become representative of a single fluid point, a fluid parcel. And we're going to can simply extract the volume integral and write an equation for the conservation of mass. This isn't quite in a usable form yet, so what I'll do is I'll expand the um, right hand term out uh, by the chain rule, uh, by the product rule, which gives us uh, u dot grad of rho plus rho times the divergence of u. Okay, so this term on the right here, 
kind of like a different colour, is, is telling us um, how the fluid diverges and contracts and um, whereas uh, this term in the middle is telling us how uh, advection of um, one type of fluid uh, will change the local density okay now something that's often used in a the mechanical context is the total time derivative, which is the combination of the local time derivative, it's defined capital D rho dt, combination of the advection and the local time derivative, and that allows us to write a slightly simpler equation. And this total time derivative is the is really the um, time derivative of density following a parcel of fluid uh, as it as it's advected through the domain. In other words, it's a Lagrangian concept. One more thing is that uh, if the flow is incompressible, then the density, uh, this left-hand term here, along fluid parcels doesn't change. In other words, we can simplify this equation to what's often called the continuity equation, uh, which is just uh, that the divergence of u is equal to zero. So this uh, divergence equation, continuity equation down here, often is used in an ocean context, but not usually in an atmospheric context, whereas uh, this is the more general form of the equation of mass, which we'll use to solve fluid problems.